safe, I'm home, I'm healthy, and I'm very grateful. This can change in the blink of an eye, in a heartbeat. I hope that my little story of our family's brush with the virus will give you some idea of how true this really is. Hello, my name is Austin Holly. I'm a parishioner at St. Teresa's. In 2003, our son was completing his emergency room program at McMaster University in Hamilton. As part of this, he was to come home to Halifax and do a rotation at the hospital there. When he didn't call the day he was to leave, I called. His partner told me that he wouldn't be coming home, that he was very seriously ill, and that he was in the hospital in Hamilton in the ICU. Shocking, absolutely shocking news. My wife got on the first available plane, along with uh, St. Teresa and the infant of Prague, and within a few hours arrived in Hamilton. She went to the hospital and when she entered his room, she found him to be very seriously sick, throwing up, nauseated, severe headaches from intracranial pressure and a young man who was very, very close to dying. She stayed with him through the course of this, raiding the saints on a continual basis while he was given intravenously antiviral drugs to try to control this virus, which they finally determined was a viral encephalitis. After a number of days, he was released into a regular room and then to his home in Hamilton, and within a week or so, home to Halifax with us. When he got off the plane, I was absolutely, absolutely devastated at how he looked. He had lost 40 pounds, head and shaved, and he still looked to be seriously ill. While at home, he was on an IV twice a day for an extended period of time. When he got better enough to go back to his program, he left and went back to Hamilton to continue his studies. Before he left, my wife and I had met with the doctor, one of the doctors at the hospital, the specialist. He told us that in the case of viral encephalitis, there was a high probability that there would be serious residual effects. This was another devastating blow for this family. However, uh, with prayers and with constant intercession, and as my wife's term, the raiding of the saints, he stayed well. He was at, at this particular point in time in his program, getting ready to write his FRCPs, his medical exams, his finals. In the fall of that year, 2003, we got a call saying that he had passed with flying colors. What an amazing recovery and what a showering of graces that we received during this whole period and the support and love of our family, friends, the medical profession, and the saints. Uh, just to go ahead a bit, it's now 2020, 17 years later. Our son is now on the front lines of this COVID pandemic, working as an emergency room doctor in Hamilton, and as I said, on the front lines of what is happening on a day-to-day -day basis. We still worry when he goes to work. We still worry that he's being exposed, but he's very careful, he's fully prepared, he's fully decked out and prepared with his PPE, and we are confident and th that he will survive this and that all things will come out of this and that we will survive it. I, I, I thank everyone who, who prayed for him and sent prayers his way and best wishes. And I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity this morning to share this story with you and the graces that we have received 
and all the good things that have come our way. I ask you to stay safe, stay home, stay healthy. Thank you very much and have a good day. Goodbye.